Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to do an experiment and some repairs. I don't know if this is going to be a two-part video, but it is my loud furnace down below. It sits underneath my refrigerator behind this panel. I'll take this off later on, but let me show you what I have going on. So I have one heater vent register here in this main living area, and then a, another one right there. And going towards the back, you will see there's two individual ones in the bedroom. And there's a very small one in the bathroom here. That's it. So the thing I've noticed on this furnace, the, my biggest problem, is that when you run the propane furnace option here, I have a two-part problem. One, it is extremely loud. This is the loudest furnace I've ever had. And the big problem that we have here is the return air register is just open right to the furnace. The second part is with the two vents here, on the inside they're actually tied together and they're just one little supply hose that goes to the furnace. So the main heating out here, even though it looks like it has two heat registers, it's only fed off of one hose so it gets not as warm here and the bedroom gets extremely hot. I'm talking like in the 90s. This will get so hot here and stay pretty cold here. So these two are almost useless as in they should almost be uh, blocked off. So I'll show you uh, how I'm going to fix this. And you may run into a similar problem where you have the hot and cold spots. I don't think these RV manufacturers really do too much uh, engineering on this. So we'll show you what the uh, problem and the solutions are. All right, I'm about to uh, turn the furnace on and you will see how hot or how loud this gets. So that is the furnace noise right there. You, see, you hear how extremely loud it is? If you look again very close, you can see right through these grills and the furnace inside. But the main reason I'm doing this is we're going to do an experiment here again, not scientific like usual. We're going to check how much air is coming out of here. And here is my main grill in the living area. And you can see it's only going about 5.8 miles per hour. So that one doesn't blow that hard. And then my other one in the living area is down here. And this one barely blows out at all. If you can see here, 1.8 miles per hour. So that doesn't blow very hard. So that's a combination of the two in the living area and then in the bedroom. Let's look at the one in the bedroom here. Look at that. That's one in the bedroom and then here's the other one in the bedroom. So you can see why it gets so hot back here compared to the front. And then one last one to check of course is the bathroom one. This one blows uh, pretty good for how small it is. Let's see here. I don't know if the camera will pick that up. So the weakest, or the biggest problem I have really, is that my main living area, even though it's the largest volume, has the weakest air output. And the bedroom area, even though it's about the smallest, that actually has the most volume. And like I said, this gets about in the 90s here, and it will barely get in the 60s up here. So this is what it looks like underneath that louvered grill. So I took the louvered grill out, and you can see just a direct access to the furnace down below. And let me uh, give you a quick snapshot. Over on this side, you will see just that one duct here. That little four inch duct goes in there, splits off to the two grills in the front. So physically, it's almost impossible for it to supply that much air because that is shared by two grills. And then these two here, they actually go individually to those two grills on the floor. And then there's that little one that goes to the bathroom. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. We'll add a, they have these little knockouts here that you can add 
more pieces on here. So I've already purchased the actual, I'll call it the adapter. And then separately, I've also purchased uh, these plugs. So we're going to go ahead and fix and redistribute how this air should come out. And you can't see the internal components of this furnace. But like a typical blower fan, there's a squirrel cage that goes inside here. And if you read the ins installation instructions, it does say that you have to experiment with which one of these outputs are going to produce more air than the others. I'm assuming that these ones on the directly on the opposite end of the squirrel cage will provide the most air compared to the one on the sides. Well, let me show you what I have going on here. I've taken the uh, furnace cover off, as you can see, and this ductwork right here coming off the furnace used to be connected to this piece. I Just like this, took all the tape off and unscrewed these pieces here. And if you look down below, what it is is just basically two holes drilled here and it goes into a metal pan. Basically, that's the ductwork in the floor itself. So both of these are going into that ductwork and then eventually making it back to those uh, two floor vents over there. So we're gonna go ahead and cap this. So I bought one of these caps here and this will just snugly fit in there if that makes sense. I'll press it in here and tape it up really good so air can't come back up here. And that should at least eliminate, I had way too much air going in the back. And then with this duct here, you can't just cap this because you do have to have, if you really look at the uh, duct work, you have to have enough outlets out of this furnace, otherwise it will overheat. So I will likely take this, I have a new piece of duct here, and I'm going to reroute it and put a, another outlet over on that side. So we're going to see if we can balance the system a little bit better. So this is what I have right now. I put the cap on, I'm going to seal it off with this aluminum tape. And this is going to be very different between different types of furnaces and different RVs. But the ductwork that's actually coming out of the furnace, each one the air pressure is going to vary a little bit. So you do have to experiment a little. Yeah, I don't think the RV manufacturers really do that. Especially with this RV, I barely got any air up in the front. Then of course way too much air in the back. And this is no exception. I think pretty much every RV I've ran into that issue. Sometimes it's an actual collapsed ductwork some, uh, somewhere down below but my ducts were all in good shape. Okay, we're about to take this grill cover off here, this one, and the one to the side. And I've taken this bottom drawer out here to show you better. You can see that one ductwork comes in and goes to the side of the furnace right there. So that's only one. And that one will split off to both grills. So unfortunately, this entire front two-thirds of the RV is only heated by that one little supply right there. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. Let's uh, go ahead and take off this grill cover here. I've taken this off before. Alright, I'm just showing you a glimpse of what I have going on. This is underneath my sink. I removed this floor. You can see how thin this wood is here. It was only held down by little staples, so it was pretty easy to just pop off from the bottom. I just pounded up from the uh, bottom. And this popped up like this. So every RV is going to be a little bit different, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically remove this duct here, remove that duct and run a whole new line dedicated to that outlet by the door, because that's probably where I want the most hot air to go out. I'll change this to a return air. So it's just going to be open. I'll just put a grill on it. And I'll end up putting a, another supply vent over here, dedicated supply vent. So in the main living area here, we'll have two supply vents, two main supply vents. Okay, this is uh, what I ripped out of the system. So this was the duct that was by the door that was connected to this duct right here and you can see it's kind of a T fitting here so a lot of the air came out here barely any came out of here and then it continued on like this all the way back to the furnace 
Like I mentioned, we're going to abandon this one completely, get rid of that. We're going to make a dedicated duct line that goes through here directly to the furnace, and then bring another dedicated line to somewhere around here. Would have been nice to put it back in the old spot, but the problem is inside the cabinet, I don't have room to bring in two ducts across here. So I can only bring, so from this point forward this way, I can only bring one dedicated duct work this way. So the second one will have to be somewhere around here and I'll have to drill a new hole in there. But I think that's the best game of attack. All right, I'm gonna wrap up and close up the sink area here. But basically I have a dedicated ductwork. This is this uh, new black ductwork here. It's all I could find online at this time. And you see this grill here? That's just going to act like a return air. It's actually empty down below. I couldn't get two ducts into here. I wanted to get a dedicated duct here, but I just couldn't get past this stage here. And then I put this grill back on there. So that should blow out a lot harder by the door, by the front of the RV. And with this return, I can probably get rid of that return grill or plug it up over here. That, because that's where all that noise is coming from. And I will run that dedicated ductwork back to its original connection and run a new one and put a hole down here. I'll show you the uh, finished project and some uh, air testing after. All right, right here we're gonna be putting a new duct diffuser in right here. So I bought one of these uh, diffusers. It matches the other areas. And this, call it 90 degree profile. So I'm going to have a new duct come across this way. That's that one right there now. And I need to cut a new opening in the tool kick. I won't show you that boring detail, but I'm just using one of these uh, multi-tools and I'll show you the uh, end result. Here's a uh, quick snapshot before I close everything up. You can see I installed this ductwork. Put a clamp on here and this ductwork is coming through this toe kick that I cut out. And I'll end up putting some of this reflective uh, silver tape along here. And then finally, this trim piece diffuser will go on here, just like the other, so it will match the rest of the uh, toe kicks. So that's a quick glimpse before I wrap everything up. Let me show you here what I exactly did. The reason my heating was performing so poorly was that the manufacturer had this distribution done uh, incorrectly and very poorly. So let me uh, show you what we have going on. If you look here, it's going to be hard to see with this lighting, but that black duct back there, that one goes all the way to the toe kick by the front door or the entry door. This dedicated duct here goes right there. That's the new one I added on. I disconnected this one from the bedroom. So the bedroom only has one duct going to those two floor vents. Both those floor vents are connected down at the bottom. And then of course there's that little two inch that's going to the bathroom. So originally this one didn't exist at all. So they had one, two, three, and then that little two inch. And if you look at the specifications of this furnace, this furnace is supposed to have a minimum of four four inch ductwork. That's uh, actually what it calls out for. And I noticed that I kind of had a whistling before and I think there was just too much back pressure in that furnace because the manufacturer did not have enough ducts distributed. That's why I ended up doing two dedicated ones. This dedicated one here to the bedroom, that small two inch that goes to the bathroom, and why I reconnected this one here. So I'm going to end up putting a board here with a sound panel and making only this half the return air. And I'm going to put a little return air sound matting in there. That way we don't hear that uh, noise. 
And that's why I did a decibel a meter test because I will, I might end up doing a part two, but I really want to quiet this uh, furnace down. And because I have a return air there, I can basically reduce the size of this return air grill by half and put some sound baffling in here and reduce the sound. But the moral of the story is if you're not happy with your furnace, and I think most RVs are kind of like this. This one has been at the absolute worst. It's almost not usable because the bedroom would get way hotter than 90 degrees and this just could not keep up up in the front. Well, now I have one, two, three ducts that are going to heat this front area. So it should be plenty for what I need. And again, following the actual manufacturer's suggestion. So the uh, bad part about this one right here is that it's awful close to the return air that I'm going to be putting in. And technically they're supposed to be about 18 inches apart. But I can't get it perfect, but I already know it works much better than what the manufacturer gave me. I think the manufacturers can get away with this because for the most part, many people use these RVs like a camper and they're used to roughing it a little bit. And that's just not how we use it. If they would have installed this correctly from the first place, we wouldn't have these issues. But, you know, this is uh, typical of most manufacturers out there. There is a solution, so you don't have to live with it. You know, if the manufacturer ever watches this, all they have to do is read the literature of the Suburban Furnace, and it tells you exactly what to do. You know, you can fine-tune it by uh, air balancing it too, but I won't go into the details of that the most importantly they just need to put the distribution correctly from the uh, beginning but uh, that's it i don't think i will show you my return air that sound boot to quiet down if you're interested i may do it in the future but uh, that is not something i plan on doing a video for so let's uh, go ahead and do some air testing here and let's start with this front one here first Looks like we're going about 8 miles per hour. And then of course, this one is abandoned. So that one is just a return air. So it's just sucking air uh, back in. So not much going on there. This is a new dedicated one we put right by the uh, toe kick here. And then let's go ahead and check some back ones here. This first one here is 4.9, between 4.7 and 4.9. Then the second one here in the bedroom, you can see it slowed down to 3.1, 4.5 there, we'll go right in the center. So in the second one here, you can see it slowed down to 3.1. So I guess we can check the uh, bathroom one. Let's go ahead and check this one just for fun. All right, it looks about eight miles per hour, 8.5, 8.5, 8 8.7. All right. Remember, these uh, tests are not scientific, but it does show you that I definitely increased the airflow up in the front, which I really needed, and decreased it in the back. And I did add one more. There's one right here that you probably cannot see, but I have one cranking out here. You see that at about 14 miles per hour? That is it. Hopefully uh, you like videos like this. Uh, if you have stuck around this long, please hit that thumbs up button and we'll see you on the next video.